Hi guys and welcome to Quinton's Guitar Corner and in today's episode um, I'm going to do something a little bit different today in that I'm going to take you guys through a quick tour of what I've got going on in terms of the guitars that are currently sitting in my guitar boat as well as what I use live and for recording. So here we go. The first guitar that I've basically got here is a 1996 PRS CE Bolt-On 22 um, that I've had since 2014. This guitar has been through the ringer. It's got so much wear and tear, but I absolutely love it. Um, it's definitely the best sounding six string that I've ever owned. I'll never part with it. It's perfect for my body. The string through um, bridge itself is perfect for what I need. This comes with the original Dragon pickups. Um, I'm not sure if they're series one or two. What's a little bit odd with this guitar is that I've got a, roti a, ro a rotisserie, <laughs> a ro rotary switch. Uh, pickup selector which does make it a little bit difficult when you're playing lives and you want to switch sounds but because I mainly play metal I just kind of stay on the bridge pickup with that one. Um, got series one locking tuners which to be honest I still have no idea how they actually work but the tuning holds. Um, I've used this guitar ranging from tunings from E flat in one of the bands I was in to um, drop C and then even you know, this guitar can basically handle like a gauge 56 in drop A and it sounds super clear. Um, one of my favorite guitars to use for clean as well. And what's cool about this one is um, it's been signed by Paul Reed Smith himself on the back of the headstock, addressed to me at a signing that he basically did um, in 2017. And uh, yeah, so I will never, part with this guitar. Now the next guitar that I'm bringing out here is an absolute beast of a guitar. Um, it belongs to my cousin who basically was the dude that got me into metal way back when when I was a kid when I was like 10 years old and um, he got me into all the you know, pretty much the main bands that I still listen to to this day, like Metallica, Pantera, Slayer, Black Sabbath, Sepultura, all that kind of stuff. I mean, this guitar has lasted this long since uh, 2006, so it's got a three-way pickup switch, which looks a little bit like a quarter, but it's not really. Um, traction knobs on there, so you've got volume and two tones. Then you got a Floyd Rose bridge, which is a licensed bridge. Um, it's comparable, you can still bend up, bend down. I mean, the tuning stability is not the best, but it, it's manageable, it's fine. Um, it's cool for recording with, for sure. Um, what we did was we took the stock pickups out and we actually replaced them with a bunch of Seymour Duncans uh, that came from an old Jackson uh, RR3. Uh, with the Floyd Rose that I used to have, and these things sing. Um, locking, um, locking up on the neck, whammy bar's pretty tight. Um, but I think the thing that makes this thing stand out is definitely that paint job. I mean, whilst it doesn't quite look like the original paint job of the dime or how the production models look, I, I still think whoever did this did a really good job. So at some point my cousin will want this back and I'll be pretty hard pressed to want to give it back. Sorry, Dave. So the next thing I want to showcase is this six string Spire bass. And uh, basically with this thing, I mean, it's got a really good DI quality to it. I quite like the sound of the DI on it and I don't know if that's just because it's got a gigantic neck on it. But it does the job uh, for demos and whatnot. Um, you've got dual humbuckers. I don't have no idea what these pickups are, but you've got volume and then your EQs and you've got a blend as well, which is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, 
does the job. Don't really think about it. It's quite hard to play, but then kind of helps when you're playing eight string guitars to jump onto something like this. And it's, it's relatively comfortable. It's actually quite flat with the way that the neck is, and especially when you go lower down. Feels good. Good sounding bass. Pretty happy. How many strings now? God, crazy. So this guitar here is one of my favorites. It's my Solar A18C. Um, it's an eight string uh, guitar. With comes equipped with an Evertune bridge, a Seymour Duncan Solar pickups, uh, locking tuners as well, just in case you need any more tuning stability. Um, the side dots do light up. I'm not sure if it's actually lumen lay, but they do light up, which is always a plus. Uh, volume tone, uh, five way selector, which is pretty cool. Um, I mean, look at that headstock, that headstock is pretty ridiculous. Uh, matte black finish, super smooth on the neck, which is pretty cool. Um, this guitar has become my workhorse. I pretty much use it more than the six strings, if anything. I literally use it for everything at the moment. I do have another one of these um, as a backup. As pre-COVID, I decided, well, if we're going to tour, I need two of these. So I went and got two. Um, and yeah, absolutely awesome. Both of them suit me perfectly. Uh, currently writing a lot of the new Red Method uh, stuff with this guitar. And hopefully it will feature on the next record. Uh, what I did do was replace um, the strap locks on this one with the dual design strap locks um, because it's a bit of a mad show when we play in Red Method and I need to make sure my guitar stays attached to me basically because sometimes things go wrong. But yes, I absolutely love this guitar. Um, what I love about these pickups in particular is actually is that they're not they're not overly saturated they they pick out your characteristics with your right and left hand to what you're doing and basically show you what you do and in quite a clear way i find and in particular when you're doing the sort of like fluttering john Petrucci of alternate picked runs on the on the net pickup it feels absolutely awesome um, you get tons of sustain out of this thing and I uh, ended up getting two because why would, why have one when you can have two? And um, there isn't much else to say about this thing. I mean, it just looks like an absolute weapon. <laughs> and uh, yeah, even though it's got a matte finish, there are a couple of dings on it, but yeah. I love, I absolutely love this guitar. This is one of my favorites out of the collection uh, that I do have so far. So I can't, in terms of tuning actually, so you have your first six strings, uh, which I have here. And I have those in E tuning. Then you have drop A on the seven and then another E. And uh, you may have seen in other videos with the Evertune, what I love about it is that, you know, you can hit as hard as you want. You're not getting that warble that you get. So on other guitars. So that's why you should get, I, it come, I can't recommend it enough in terms of getting a hold of a guitar with an Evertune because you can still do all the things that you need to do on a guitar in terms of bending if you're a lead player or vibrato but it's just so accurate to a point that I, I can't see myself not using one <laughs> basically which is what I like in particular because we play in low tunings tunings everything if something feels off it's not cool so yes buy Solars if you can they do some amazing six strings and seven strings and this is probably the best value for money eight string I've ever found. Oh, stainless steel frets too. <laughs> Thought I'd throw that in there. Now this guitar doesn't actually belong to me. Um, it belongs to our Red Method's front of house engineer, Dan Barrett. Love you, Dan. 
he got a hold of an old school Ibanez RG1570, which is here. And it comes with your V7, V S7 and V8 pickups. Um, a low profile um, edge bridge. I think it's the edge zero. And I've always wanted to be able to play an Ibanez like this. And this is uh, made in Japan. I've restrung it and given it a little bit of a setup and it, I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, it's got the team J Craft imprint on the back, goat toe tuners, um, volume tone, five way selector. Um, you got the belly cut here for the body contours. And people always ask me about, say, my picking technique and stuff. And it actually comes from back in the day when I was a kid. I had a Jackson Strat where the Floyd Rose was like a, a low profile Floyd Rose. So the, the tuners didn't stick up. And so what that allowed me to do was when I wanted to get up on the high frets and really get into the picking, and the high, you know, the high notes and all that kind of stuff. I could, um, you know, pretty much put my arm because I was a small kid, like out a bit more, and you know, put pressure on the bridge without the guitar going out of tune, and use it as an anchor point. And I think that kind of screwed me up <laughs> for life. And uh, yeah, I, I've been using that since that kind of technique. So. To find a guitar with this kind of setup, and Ibanez do make amazing tremolo bridges, and the low profile design just seems to work for me there, so I love it. Um, bolt on neck, uh, I'm not sure what year this was made on, but this is part of the Prestige line as well. It's got a real cool little sparkle finish, like a red sparkle, which you got. I hope you guys can see it in the camera. And I'll do some close-up shots of this one, but there is going to be a full-scale demo coming with this one soon, and it will be featured on um, Red Method demos and stuff because I want to start bringing in. So now we'll move on to amps. So for the past four or five years, I've been using the Kemper Profiler, um, mainly live, and it's only in the last year or two. Um, where I've started using it from a recording capacity and just you know using the profile cabs and heads that you basically get to you know try and find my tone when I'm basically uh, recording demos and all that sort of stuff. So what I go from is say guitar into wireless which is a Line 6 G90 relay wireless into the Kemper and then from the Kemper either there'll be an output to front of house and then I'll also have a cabinet that will be used to monitor on stage. In terms of the Kemper profiler I mean it's essentially it's not a mod people call it an amp modeler but it's called a profiler for a reason because it's essentially a digital snapshot of that amp that you've mic'd up in whichever environment, taking the room's characteristics in the, in, the, uh, in the equation as well as the position of your microphones into whatever desk you're running or interface or whatever. And it basically takes that read and puts it in the Kemper for you to use. And people have always, I've not gotten into profiling just yet because I, in my head, I feel as though I'd need to do it in an environment which sounds, that is equipped to, to be able to do it like a really good studio or a really good room that's built for it. This room isn't so much so. <laughs> so um, I hope that one day I will get into it and um, figure that out. But in terms of the Kemper, I mean, what I love about it is its consistency. Um, it has never gone down on me, ever. 
it has never broken down on me at all um, on stage, and I say I will touch wood, or in recording or anything like that. It's n it's never failed. I love the fact that you can take a DI out of it as well. Um, so and you can obviously reamp with it too. So there isn't really a need for me to get like a separate reamp box or a different IR loader or anything like that because the thing takes impulse responses too. It's literally everything. I mean, there's a reason why they haven't come out with like, I mean, obviously they've come out with a floorboard, but they haven't come up with an update to th this version. So I don't see myself switching from it just yet, unless there's something that absolutely blows it out of the water, but we'll see. Um, I also, for changing uh, patches live, I currently use the Kemper remote which is actually the most sturdiest thing. You can use other remotes in there, but yeah, they seem to break pretty easily. And I'm not in a band where uh, you can afford to replace things really quickly. So um, it's, yeah, it's sturdy. It's lasted our touring schedule. I have it normally packed away in this, um, in this case here, which is built like a tank made out of like army grade material and um yeah i mean what else can i say i mean the profile i, in, I guess in terms of the sounds that i generally go for in metal in particular it's been totally flipped on its head in terms of having to look for eight string sounds um but i'm getting there and uh i feel like i'm getting closer to achieving the sound that i want based on the profiles that I've been able to get a hold of. So thank you, Reamp Zone, and thank you, JTM, and thank you to anyone that's put up a f profile online that I've been able to use. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to like, share, or subscribe to the content if you dig what I do. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Quinton's Guitar Corner, or Facebook, or Twitter, anywhere. I'm everywhere. And you can also follow my band, A Red Method. Um, we're coming out with some insane stuff very, very soon. And uh, yeah, if you like what I do, you can also click on the notification bell um, that is next to the subscribe button if you want to keep up to date on all my happenings. So uh, with that in mind, I wish you guys a very good week and I will see you guys very soon.